Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Sarah and you're watching the next episode of my Eating Weeds series. In this episode we're going to talk about the creeping speedwell. First I will give you a little introduction, then we will go about how to identify this plant, its growing habits and habitat, and in the end I will give you a small recipe and show you how you can incorporate this herb into your diet. Here you can see the creeping speedwell, also known as Veronica filiformis. It is a spreading perennial ground cover adorned with dainty flowers. It is native to Eastern Europe and Western Asia, but can be found now in many areas as introduced plant. In Ireland, the plant was sown into clothes for travelers' good luck. Let's have a look at the structure of the plant. Veronica filiformis is a trailing perennial that only reaches up to about 12 centimeters or 5 inches tall and it produces small singular flowers. They are on relatively long slender stalks that arise from the leaf axis. The flowers appear between April and July, but the plant can be harvested between March and September. The leaves of the plants are 5 to 10 millimeters and are rounded, kidney-shaped or shell-shaped. The filiformis is similar to other Veronica species, such as Veronica arvensis and Veronica chamaedris, but can be distinguished by the size of its leaves and the lack of seed capsules. Let's talk about its growing habits and growing habitat. It produces a mat of hairy stems that readily roots at knots that touch the substance. It can sometimes be considered a nuisance in lawns, sod or turf. It is found in gardens, grassy paths, and in meadows, where it prefers shades, moist soil, good fertility, and low mowing height. The creeping speedwell reproduces asexually by re-sprouting from separated sections of stem and rhizome, and easily takes hold in new habitat. As I said, this plant is often used as a ground cover in gardens and valued for its pretty little blue flowers. Due to the spreading nature of this plant, it can also become invasive. It is very easy to take care for and very hardy. Most Veronica species are edible. Before it forms flowers, it is very tender. After forming flowers, it can tend to be a little bit bitter. But the bitterness complements well when put into a blend of tea. And the flowers can also be very pretty as edible decorations. Creeping Speedwell can be eaten cooked and raw. The flavor is somewhat reminiscent of watercress. The creeping speedwell is also known to have some medical use, uh, for example as a blood purifier. Some people also use an extraction of the leaves to put on their eyes when they have sore eyes. Throughout history this plant has also been used to treat urinary infections. Now let's use this herb to make a dressing and a salad. For the dressing I use two cups of spinach, quarter cup of olive oil, quarter of a small red onion, one clove of garlic, one tablespoon of agave syrup, one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, one teaspoon of red chili pepper flakes, a little bit of pepper and a little bit of salt, and a handful of parsley and of course a handful of the creeping speedwell. Then I mix everything together and prepare the salad. For that I put one cup of dry couscous one tablespoon of veggie stock and mix it together. Then I poured hot water and just until everything was covered. And then I put a lid on top. After five minutes or so of steaming, um, the couscous was already uh, ready. I just mixed it uh, up a little bit. After the couscous has cooled down, I added a quarter of a cucumber, a can of peas, a block of vegan or regular feta cheese, a handful of chopped nuts, and a tablespoon of sesame seeds, and of course, a dressing. 
I mix everything together and there you have it. I added some of the speedwell on top. And I put some of the speedwell, about a tablespoon, into my cup and poured hot water over it to make it tea. While waiting for the tea to brew, I used the time to crochet a little bit. The flowers were so pretty. I sifted the tea and added some flowers on top of it. Some of the leftovers I put on top of my toast. And now, with all that being said, let's have a try. I sprinkled mine on top, but you can, of course, also cooperate, cooperate the flowers into the cell. Because we don't have any other leafy, leafy vegetables in the salad, I think this complements well and it does um, stick out of the couscous and other things. Even though mine already flowered, even though mine already flowered, it isn't bitter at all. Mm. Delicious, you definitely have to try this recipe out. Hmm, on its own I get the bitter note. Not too bitter though. But with incorporated into the salad I don't get the bitterness at all. Now let's try the tea. Hmm, mm, it's a very nice tea. When I tried the plant raw, I got the I got the bitterness and also I sift the um, leaves out of here and I tried them. Oh, they were slightly cooked and they were very bitter, but this extraction is not bitter at all. It is rather mild and with the flowers inside it, I don't know if you can see it, it's very pretty. The liquid also didn't get too dark, as you can see it's a rather soft, pale, green, yellowish. Ooh. Very nice. What do you think about these recipes? Would you try them yourself? We are now at the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did, please consider giving it a like and subscribe for more. See you next time!